review of what we have discussed. Sabi ni Lord sa Exodus chapter 19 is to make us what? A kingdom of priests. This is what God wants. He wants us to become a kingdom of priests. When I say, when the Bible says kingdom of priests, ibig sabihin, isang klaseng tao lang, ang isang uri ng tao lang ang nasa kaharian. It means, all of us are what? Priests. In the Old Testament, before the giving of the law, there was already the priesthood. And the priesthood that is operating during that time, in the time of Abraham, is what? Melchizedek priesthood. And this kind of priesthood is king and priest. Okay? Kaso lang pagdating ng law, it was nahati yon, nahiwalay yung kingship and the, uh, the priesthood. Because Moses rejected yung offer ni Lord na maging priest siya. Ipinasa niya kay Aaron. That's why God chose the tribe of Levi to be the priest. Now, in the New Testament, yung Old Testament priesthood, or the, the Aaronic priesthood or the Levitical priesthood is the shadow of the fullness of what is real. Okay? That's why Jesus has been appointed by God to be what? The high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Kasi sa lumang tipan po, yung mga high priest, every year they enter the, the Holy of Holies and offer a blood sacrifice para for the remission of sin. Good only, good, on, good only for one year. Okay? But this one, ang ginawa ni Jesus, it is forever, once and for all. He did not offer the blood of anim, a blood of animal, but what? His own blood. Okay? So he went to the altar in heaven and offered his own blood. Not only us ang iridim ni Lord, even yung altar sa langit because it was defiled by the devil. That's why it, need, it needs what? Redemption. In the New Testament, sa Revelation, ang purpose ni Lord sa atin ay maging ano? Kings and priests din. Because remember the law of dominion states na ang Diyos the heavens belongs to God, but the earth He was given to man. When God said, let them rule, let them have dominions, ibig sabihin doon ay He inhibit Himself and He removed Himself, including the celestial beings, the angels, including the demons, to intervene in the affairs of men. Ibig sabihin, without the permission of man, even though God is a powerful God, He cannot intervene unless man uh, give him the permissions. That's the reason why prayer is very important because when we pray, we are giving God a legal right to intervene in our life and in the life of our nations. Nakuha po natin. So, the very work of a believer is what? To stand before God in His court to become a priest. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, that he said that he has called us to be what? A royal priesthood, a holy nation, royal priesthood, kings and priests. Okay? Now, now na intindihan na natin, ang calling pala natin ay pare. Because no one can minister or no one can approach God unless you are a priest. In the Old Testament, Walang sino man ang pwedeng lumapit sa Diyos na hindi siya gagamit ng pare. If he's going to make a sacrifice or give gifts to God, he has to bring priest with him. Because it is only the priest is what? Recognized by God. Remember si uh, Saul, na inip siya, he made the offering, the sacrifice, and God was upset. Because he is not allowed. Nakuha niyo po. So, sa New Testament, lahat ng born-again believers, ginawa ng Diyos na ano? Na priest. So that we can enter the presence of God and ministers. We also discussed that the word pray, it means in Greek, prosyokomai, nang ibig sabihin, to enter the presence of God. That's why nung sa Matthew chapter 6, sinabi ni Lord, when you pray, 
you enter the closet is referring to an altar okay now we discuss about the altar now this morning we will be talking about tithing but the tithing is about under the order of Melchizedek priesthood. Na-discuss natin last week na there are two kinds of priesthood. Yung tinatawag na Levitical priesthood and Melchizedek priesthood. Sinabi ni Paul sa Hebrews chapter 7, binago ni Lord yung priesthood, pinalitan niya, and it is now the Melchizedek priesthood. Now, Titan has always has something to do with priesthood. Nakuha niyo po? Ang pagbibigay ng ikapo ay has something to do yung ating pagiging pare. Nakuha po natin? So, let us study now itong concept na ito. One of the most frequently asked questions in Christendom is related to the practice of tithing. The question is, is tithing for today? So, may debate yan. Sabi na Old Testament yan, hindi na dapat mag-tithe. Sabi naman ng iba, oh, it's in the New Testament, dapat mag-tithe ka pa rin. At sabi nila, before the tithe was, before the law was given, the tithe is already there in Genesis chapter 14. Okay? Now, some people believe that tithing is a modern-day extortion of gullible, by, of gullible saints by modern-day parasy. Masakit, ano? Pero, yung iba, ganyan ang tingin. Okay? So, maraming mga tao, ang tingin do sa mga pastor ay, ano, they're just exhorting the people of of the tithes. Okay? May mga ganyan. Hindi natin maalis yan. And debates over the practice of tithing have increased. Bakit ang increase? Because of the economic decline of many nations. Siguro doon sa mga bansa na well off sila, madali sa kanila magbigay ng tithes. Pero doon sa mga maihirap, hirap silang magbigay kasi nga yung mindset o yung paradigm is this. Kung yung 100% ng sweldo ko ay hindi kasya sa aking pang-araw-araw na buhay, eh how much more kung ito'y bawasan ko ng 10% at 90 na lang, paano ito makakarating doon sa aking... <laughs> oh, mas lalo hindi ito makakarating. Okay? Kung 100%, kulang na nga eh. 90 pa. That is the paradigm of many Christians today. So many born again believers testified how their life and personal economy changed for the better when they started tithing. Marami po mga nagte-testify na nung sila ay nagsimula na maging mag-tithe at naging faithful kay Lord sa tithing. Alam niyo ba may survey ako nabasa na dito daw sa Pilipinas, karamihan mga simbahan, major, not eh, hindi naman lahat, but the majority of the churches there are only 20% of the members who are faithfully giving their tithes and offering. 20% lang daw. Sabi pa nga sa akin yung mga ibang pastor, hindi pastor, hindi 20. Mababa pa sa 20, parang 10 lang yung mga faithful. Why? That's a big question. ba? Many sincere God-loving children who have said that their tithe is not working for them. Meron din man nagsasabi na the tithe is not working for them in spite we are faithful. So many do not believe that tithing is applicable to post-Calvary New Testament believers. When I say post-Calvary New Testament believers, it's referring to us. After the death of Jesus Christ, the generation follows are what? The post-Calvary New Testament believer. Marami nagsasabi na hindi na daw yan ano, uh, applicable sa atin ngayon. 
Now, let's look at Malachi chapter 3. So, ito yung madalas na ating ginagamit na scripture that we can find in the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 to 12. The Bible says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of us, I will not, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you, pour out for you such blessing that there will be no room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So the book of Malachi was never addressed, this is the truth, it was never addressed to the post-Calvary New Testament believers. Okay, The audience of this Malachi is the Old Testament believers. It was written to specifically rebuke Levites who were withholding the tithe from the household of Aaron. Okay? So that's the context. So the entire book of Malachi was written for one main purpose, to make the people of Israel remember the law of Moses. Malachi 4 verse 4 Remember to obey the law of Moses, my servant, all the decrees and regulations that I gave him on Mount Sinai for all Israel. And tithe is one. Okay? And the Lord is telling the, the Israelites, is rebuking, reminding the, uh, admonishing the Israelites, include, especially the Levites, what? To honor God by what? Giving their, paying their tithes and offering. The word remember means putting the different parts of the law of Moses back together. That's what it means by word remember. Putting the different parts. Because those laws that has been given by God to Moses is what? Ay hindi na nasusunod ng mga tao. That's why God has to remind them. So New Testament preachers and teachers who use Malachi 8 to 10 to exact the tithe must not end there. So if you want to share the tithes or explain the tithe, it must not be Malachi chapter 8. I'll show you the other way. Okay? <clears throat> the spiritual benefits of tithing in the priestly order of Melchizedek are infinitely greater than the spiritual benefits of tithing into the Levitical priesthood. Remember what we have discussed last Sunday, na pinag-change ni Lord ang priesthood sa New Testament. From Levitical priesthood to Melchizedek priesthood. He was appointed to be the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So, nabago na. Even ang pag ay nabago din. It's not under the Levitical priesthood. Remember, Jesus did not come from uh, the tribe of Levi. He came from the tribe of Judah. So, in other words, Jesus cannot offer an animal sacrifice because he is not what? From the tribe of Levi. He is from the tribe of Judah. So we will look into the spiritual benefits of tithing into the Levitical priesthood order and then contrasted them with the spiritual benefits of tithing into the priestly order of Melchizedek. Okay, there is a blessing when you give your tithes into a Levitical priestly order. And kapag naunawaan nyo din itong Order of Melchizedek, priestly order of Melchizedek. Remember in Genesis chapter 14, when Abraham met Melchizedek, he paid his tithe. Okay? So, ano yung mga benefits na ito? So, 
let us first discuss the benefits of tithing into the Levitical priesthood. Like what we have read, uh, ano daw ang blessing na naghihintay sa atin? When we give tithes into a Levitical priesthood, sabi ni Lord, He's going to open the windows of heaven. And then He's going to pour out blessing with not enough room to receive it. Then there will be rebuking of the devourer by God for the people's sake and the preservation of the fruits of the ground. And then there will be protection from untimely harvest. And the last one, nation shall call you Bless. These are the benefits of tithing into Levitical priesthood. So if the blessing is being poured out of the windows of heaven, it means that the recipients of the blessing are operating from the outside of the eternal structures of the kingdom of heaven. You get, imagine nyo, there is a house. Nasa loob ng house si Lord. Sabi niya, He's going to open the windows for you to receive the blessing. So in other words, you are outside the house. And God will pour out the blessing from the window. So it is tragic when post-Calvary New Testament believers believe that they are operating from the outside of the kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is in you. So if the kingdom of God is in us, and we already entered the kingdom of God, it means we are not receiving that blessing from the outside, but we are receiving it from the inside. <clears throat> Jesus replied, remember John 3.3, 3, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus, what do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Nicodemus wanted to know the secret behind Jesus' spiritual power. And in this verse, Jesus told Nicodemus, that even though he was a teacher of the law and lived under the Levitical priesthood, he couldn't enter the kingdom of God unless he was born of the Spirit. <clears throat> Remember this one. In this particular verse, Jesus is not teaching Nicodemus how to go to heaven. Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus how to enter the kingdom of God and experience the kingdom of God. Not only to see the kingdom, but to enter or to experience the kingdom of God or the government of God. So Jesus is saying that you, Nicodemus, you are operating from the outside of the spiritual order that Jesus was part of. That's why it is a prerequisite for all of us to be born again so that we can enter the kingdom of God. In the Old Testament, the paradigm is this. Because Jesus is not yet revealed in the Old Testament. That's why, ang sabi niya, I will pour out my blessing. I will open the windows. So the recipient is at the outside. In the outside, I mean. If being born again bring us into the kingdom of God, etong tanong, why do we tie as though we are still on the outside looking in? Diba? Isipin natin yun. Why do we tithe or give our tithes or pay our tithe as though we're still outside in the kingdom of God? Sabi ni Lord, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. 1 Corinthians 2.9 We are no longer strangers and outsiders to the heavenly sanctuary of God. In fact, in Genesis chapter, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, 
verse 5 and 6. Sabi ng Bible, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. We already entered the kingdom. We are already seated with Christ in the realm of the Spirit. The blessing, the benefits of tithing in the Levitical priesthood, the condition is there. Sabi niya, he's going to pour out, he's going to open the windows. Referring na ano, ang recipient nasa outside. At ang kaibahan ng tithing in a Melchizedek priesthood is what? We are inside the house. We are inside the kingdom of God. Jesus already told us that He has given us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 16, 18. He has given us the key. So we can enter the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, experience what He has prepared for all of us. Nang sabi nga roon, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard ang mga bagay na, hinda, na hinanda ng Diyos. So it's there in the kingdom We don't just wait at the outside. We should enter and experience it. And if this is the case, then we need to be talking about opening the doors of heaven instead of the windows of heaven. Look at this. Why we knock at the door? Kahit sarili mo bahay, bakit ka nagnanak sa pintuan? Kasi wala kang dalang susi. Nakuha niyo po. At sabi ni Lord, He has given us the keys of the kingdom. So anytime, you can enter the kingdom and open it. So Old Testament, sa tithing ng Levitical priesthood, God will open the windows. Why? Because you are, out the, you are at the outside. That is the Old Testament. Nasa outside ka pa eh. Kasi si Jesus Christ hindi pa namamatay. Because the fullness of the blessing only comes after the death of Jesus Christ. And we are so blessed today na tayo ipinanganak sa season na ito. After the death of Jesus Christ. That's why sa Old Testament, pag yung pagtatayt sa mga tao sa Old Testament is based on what? Opening of the windows. Sa atin ngayon iba. The opening the doors of the kingdom of heaven because he has given us what? The key. Next, access to a no limit blessing. Tingnan nyo po, ano sabi ni Lord? Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of us, I will, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out you such blessing that there will be no room enough to receive it. Sabi ni Lord, Bibigyan tayo daw tayo ng blessing na wala tayong mapaglalagyan nito. Normally, ang unang dating pag binasa natin, wow, o nga no, ang dami pala ng blessing na ibibigay ni Lord. At you will have no room enough to receive it. Dahil sa sobra ng dami ng blessing, wala ka rin namang paglalagyan. So this is the question. That blessing will be useless if you have no room, enough, to receive it. ba? Diba? One of the promises for tithing, which was given upon the people who tithe into the Levitical priesthood, was a poured out blessing that they did not have room enough to receive. This is the question. Why would God pour out a blessing for His people for which they do not have enough room to receive in its fullness? Naalala ko tuloy nung maliit pa ako, meron akong pinapanood na pelikula. Kilala nyo si Art Lusada? Di ba? Kung kayo ay uh, kasing edad ko, maalala nyo si Art Lusada. Di ba? Mataba. And doon sa isang pelikula niya, Uh, siya ay nakipiesta, nakikain sa isang piyestahan. Yung, yung table, punong-puno ng pagkain, may lechon lahat. Kaso lang, ang plato na ibinigay sa kanya ay ano, platito. Hindi niya lang kalaki. 
So kahit gano karami yung pagkain sa table, how can you eat those things kung yung plato mo ay ano? Platito? Imagine that. That's the yan ang yan yan ang yan ang pakahulugan niya. God will pour out the blessing but our ability to receive it ay ano, maliit lang. This is a very legitimate question. Now I will give you a probable answer. Bakit maliit lang? Kasi sabi ni Lord sa Galatians 4, 1 to 5. Now I say that the ear, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Though he is a master of all, but is under the guardians and steward until the time appointed by the father. Even so, when, the, when we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the word. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons. Okay, sabi ni Lord, ang bata, like for example, may anak ako, maliliit pa, example, maliliit pa yung mga anak ko, yung anak ko, sila yung ear ng aking state. So, even though they are ear, pero hindi sila, no, they are, they don't, they, wala silang pag pinagkaiba sa slave. They have to wait to mature para mapakinabangan whatever state or inheritance meron sila. Like for example, uh, meron sa, sa batas natin, may, may tinatawag na trust. Like for example, if kung ako ay merong property, meron kong wealth. Ang gagawin ko, ilalagay ko sa isang trust yung aking wealth. At mag appoint ako ng trustee in case na ako ay mamatay at yung mga anak ko as beneficiaries ay ano. Hindi pa kayang mag ano, mag-manage. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng Panginoon. We are joint heirs with Christ. God has given us all the promises. Kaso lang, dahil we are not yet matured, naglagay si Lord ng trustee doon sa ating mga matatanggap o sa ating inheritance. Nakuha niyo po. So, ang tawag sa akin ay set law. And then, the one who will manage in case ako ay mawala is what we call the trustee. Now, when the beneficiaries ay dumating na sa tamang edad, he will go to the court and petition the court na ilipat sa kanya ang management nung uh, state na iniwan sa kanya ng mga magulang. But until that child is still a child, he is, is still immature, hindi pa niya na-comply yung requirements ng trust kasi may merong age, may maturity na requirements yan eh. Nakuha niyo po? Merong age na nakalagay doon. So, until such time, yung mga beneficiaries, ang matatanggap lang nila kung ano lang ang ibigay ng trustee. They will have no power to manage and decide for themselves kung ano ang gagawin nila doon sa inheritance na iniwan sa kanila ng ama. Ganyan ang explanation sa atin ni Paul. Diba sabi niya, now I say that the ear, as long as he is a child. Okay? So, pagbata pa, yung tagapagmana, hindi pa niya kayang magmanage. Kaya naglagay si Lord ng ano, trustee or ng guardian. Na pansamantala, siya ang mamamahala ng lahat ng kayamanan na ibinigay sa kanya. Okay? That's why when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son. Born of a woman under the law. Now, a trust beneficiary is the person who will enjoy the asset of the trust. So, ang ating ama nagbigay ng ano? Trust sa atin. And we become the trust beneficiary. 
and beneficiaries will receive money and other asset from the trust, either outright or in a smaller amount over time based on the provision in the document trust. Halimbawa, ang nakalagay doon lang doon sa document ay every month you will be provided such amount. Okay? So, ang gagawin lang sa'yo, wala kang gagawin sa negosyo ng iniwan ng tatay mo kasi merong trustee. Siya yung nagmamanage. Tumatanggap ka lang ng dividendo or ng uh, certain amount. And you will not decide. Kasi, hindi ka pa ang trustee o oh, dahil meron pang trustee. Okay? Now, even though the beneficiary received, received the trust asset, they do not manage those assets. So, ganyan pinaliwanag sa atin ni Apostle Paul. Yung ating mga iniwan na inheritance ni Lord, kasi may inheritance tayo. Meron sinasabi si Lord na last will and testament. You can read it in Galatians chapter 4, na may iniwan siyang last will and testament. But the last will in testament depends upon kung tayo ay mga child or son. The trust assets are managed by the trustee. Naglagay si Lord ng trustee. So when a trust owns a home, like for example, may bahay siya, a trustee acts as the legal owner and makes all the management decision. So yung beneficiary only get the enjoyment part. What is that? Living there. Tiktira ka lang. But the management of the house, hindi sa'yo. Kanino? Doon sa beneficiary. Now, trust effectively separate the legal ownership from beneficial ownership, which is unique. So, trustees are supposed to treat the beneficiary fairly. And trustees are supposed to take action that benefit the trust, not themselves. So, the bottom line is this. Beneficiaries enjoy the trust assets at some point, but until then, they do not control or manage those assets. Until such time na tayo ay naging son, pwede nang ibigay sa atin ang management ng trust na iniwan sa atin ng Ama sa Langit. Kaya sinabi ng Galatians chapter 4, dahil bata ka pa, naglagay si Lord ng guardian. And who is your guardian? That is the law. Galatians 3.26 Now, before faith came, we were held captive under the law. The law of Moses, referring to the law of Moses, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian, our trustee, until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that the faith has come, we no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. Sabi sa Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 to 26. We are all what? Sons of God. So if you are a son, ibig sabihin, ikaw na ngayon ang ano, mamamahala doon sa mga trust state na iniwan sa iyo ng iyong amahan sa langit. So, based on the teaching of the Apostle Paul, everything that happened under the Old Testament covenant of law was a shadow of things to come. So, whatever God did under the Mosiah covenant dispensation, He was working towards its fullest expression in Christ. Christ is the... When Christ came, the fullness of the promise of God is what? Came. So, since the birth of Jesus, God wants to deal with His people from a position of fullness and not from a position of types and shadow. That's why your blessings in the Old Testament when you give your types is what? Limited. You will have no room. Kaya nga, anong silbi ng blessing, maraming blessing, pero wala ka mang mapaglagyan. So, parang ang daming pagkain sa table, pero yung hindi mo makain dahil maliit lang yung platong ibinigay sa iyo. Imagine that. Ganyan ang itsura sa Old Testament kind of giving. Kung nga sabi sa Bisaya, gamay lang ang blessing na darating. Under the Levitical priesthood, tithers were given a poured out blessing but without enough room. 
to receive. Na-imagine nyo? He was poured out blessing, pero ikaw, wala kang container enough to have those blessings na maranasan mo. So it's simply because God had not yet established a spiritual structure in the Old Testament that contained the fullness of the blessing of Abraham. Wala pa si Jesus Christ. Kaya pagdating ni Jesus Christ, God has given us the fullness. Kaya ngayon, mauno, kapag naunawa na ito, natin ito, at pag ngayon magtatights tayo in the order of Melchizedek, sigurado, you will experience the fullness. Remember when Jesus said it is finished when he was hanging on the cross of Calvary? This is the mark of the beginning of the day of fullness for everything that God had prepared for the seed of Abraham from before the foundations of the world. Kaya doon sa uh, Levitical priesthood, ang form ng pagtatites nila, ang promise ng Levitical tithes ay ano? You will be poured out blessing without enough room to receive. But today, there'll be more rooms. Why? The fullness came through Jesus Christ. Now, how the Mosiak generation tied? Paano sila nagtatay? The Mosiak generations or the Levitical priesthood, the people there in the Old Testament, is the generation of Israel from the time of Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt until the day Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. That is the Mosiak generations. So number one, they paid a tithe according to the law. So nung unang panahon, pag nagtatite sila, they paid a tithe, not give. Now the law of Moses required that priests who are descendants of Levi must collect a tithe from the rest of the people of Israel who are also descendants of Abraham. Under the Levitical priesthood, paying one's tithe was as expected and as required as paying taxes. Noong unang panahon, ang pagbibigay ng tithes ay katulad ng pagbabayad ng tax. Whether you like it or not, you pay tax. Like for example, value-added tax. Kahit anong gawin mo, Naka-charge na yan. Habang kumain ka sa restaurant, merong 12% bat. Wala ka nang magawa. Because it's there. Nasa ano na yun eh. Oh. Required yun. So, failure to pay one's tax can have disastrous consequences. Like in America, ang tao, mas takot pa sa mga taga-IRS, Internal Revenue Service, compared sa mga police. Kasi anytime, pwede silang makulong pag di sila nagbayad ng tax. Nakuha niyo pa. Number two, their tithe was payment for priestly services. Okay? Because in the Old Testament, there is a tribe that is required, that is mandated to offer sacrifice. So, hindi sila pwedeng lumapit sa Diyos ng walang priest. So, their tithe was what? A payment for the priestly services. Numbers 18.21 As for the tribe of Levi, your relatives, I will compensate them for their service in the tabernacle. So, si Lord ang magbabayad sa kanila nung kanilang ginagawa doon sa temple. So, yung mga tao, inutusan ni Lord na ano, magbayad sila ng tithes. And then, yung tithes naman, ibibigay ni Lord doon sa mga pari. Instead of an allotment of land, kasi remember the time, yung land, hinati ilang sa labing isang tribo. Walang allotment ang ano, ang tribe of Levi. I will give them the tithes from the entire land of Israel. So, yung buong tithes ng Israel, hati-hati nila doon sa pamilya ng mga Levi, ng mga priests. So, under the priestly order of Aaron, the concept of giving the tithe did not really exist. The tithe was not given, it was paid out. Nakuha niyo po? 
hindi ito ibinibigay kung hindi ito ay binabayad. So in other words, bago mo pakitain anumang kit, anumang pera, the 10% doesn't belong to you. Kaya sinabi ni Lord, the tithe is holy unto the Lord. It means, siya ang may-ari nung 10% na anumang kikitain mo. Giving involves the concept of free will and also evoke the involvement of our highest nature. While paying involves the concept of meeting one's financial obligation. Halimbawa, uh, kuryente o tubig. Ginamit mo yung tubig, ginamit mo yung kuryente, at the end of the month, may darating sa iyong bill. Tama? And you are required to pay. Dahil kung hindi ka magbayad, puputulan ka ng linya ng tubig o ng kuryente. So, you have no emotional obligation to them. But definitely, I have a financial obligation to them. Dahil kapag hindi ako nagbayad ng bill ko sa kuryente at sa tubig, sigurado, the next day, puputulan na nila ako. So, this does not mean that tithing under Levitical priesthood was not spiritual. Everything is what? Spiritual yan. Okay? Tithing under Levitical priestly order was strictly payment for priestly services the tribes of Israel were receiving from the priest. Nakuha niyo po. So, sa so Old Testament, in-explain ko sa inyo paano sila, bakit sila nagtatites, paano sila nagtatites. And the tithing from, is what? Is bayad yon sa kanilang ano? Servisyo. Okay? Priestly services. Members of the tribe of Levi, who were also the priest of Israel, were not allowed by divine decree to own their own land or not even to have a business. They're not allowed because they are focused lang doon sa trabaho nila as a priest. The life occupation was to serve in the office of a priest all the days of their lives. Hanggang sila ay mamatay. Yun ang trabaho nila. Okay? So to ensure that these men and their families did not starve to death because of financial luck, God gave them the tithes of the tribes of Israel. So, yun yung purpose ng tithes. Para ano? Uh, supportahan yung mga priest in the Old Testament. So, the tithes of the children of Israel were to replace the lack of land and secular wages. This is why tithing under the order of Aaron or Levites is paid out and not given. So, parang tax, nagbabayad ka talaga. So, the people had, had no choice but to give it because failure to do so was tantamount of spilling, o, o, to stealing or robbing a bank. That's why in, in Malachi chapter 8, this, ba sabi niya, will a man rob God? Oh, the Lord is reminding the, the priest there. Will a man rob God? Yes, through their tithes and offering. That this is exactly what Prophet Malachi is alluding to in. Sabi niya, will a man rob God? Yes. Sabi niya. Withholding the tithe under the Levitical priesthood was like withholding paying your taxes. Eh tayo mga Pilipino eh. Napipilitan tayo magbayad. Oh, di ba? Kasi everything na binibili mo, mayroong bat, may palyo added tax. So, whether you are filing a income tax return every year, every day na bumili ka sa amang tindahan, meron kang binabayarang ano, tax. So, if the priest failed to perform their priestly assignment, they automatically forfeited their rights to the tithes of the people. Yan naman yung rule nila. Pag hindi naman nag function yung, yung Levi, yung priest, doon sa assignment niya, he will be forfeited of the rights to the tithes. But remember this one, we cannot withhold the tithe from the local church. May mga alam ako niyan eh, pag na-offend ni pastor, hindi nagbibigay ng tithes. 
akala nila ang yung tights na binibigay nila kay sa pasto nila binibigay no we cannot withhold the tight from the local church where God has planted us because we are offended by the pastor no you cannot do that number three a curse as prescribed by the Mosiak law was placed upon non-titers tandaan nyo po hindi Lord hindi si Lord ang nagka-curse pag hindi ka nag -tight. it is the law because in the law nakasama ron yung ano blessing and cursing you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 you are under a curse for your whole nation has been cheating me so the moment we withhold the tax withhold the tithes, anong mangyayari? We are cursed, but not God. It is the law. It is, kumbaga sa ano yan, penal close. Sa batas, anumang batas, sa karamihan mga batas, I mean, na mga ginagawa sa kongreso, hindi naman lahat, ay meron tinatawag na penal close or penalty pag hindi mo tinupan. They had robbed him by withholding their tithes and offering which they were required by the law to give to the Levites in exchange for the priestly services that they were receiving. So, may kasamang curse yun. Nakuha niyo po? Because it's in the law of Moses. The sentence for withholding the tithes and offering was the superimposition of a curse upon their lives. Hagai 1, 3 to 6. Kaya tinan nyo po ito. Sabi niya, Why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what ha what's happening to you. You have planted much but harvest little. You eat but you are not satisfied. You drink, but you are still thirsty. You put on clothes, but not keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. That is the result of the curse. Ano nga niyo po? Kahit ganun kalaki yung sweldo niyo, hindi magkakasya lagi. Lagi pa rin kulang kayo at the end of the month. Kaya nagkakautang-utang tayo. Why? There is a curse place on the tithes because of the law. Who cursed these people and why did they get cursed? The answer is simply they were not cursed by God but by the law of Moses in which the whole priesthood of Aaron was based. Okay? So yung priesthood ni Aaron or Levitical priesthood is what? Is based on the law. And on the law says, pag hindi ka nagbayad ng tithes, you will be cursed. Wala kang magagawa doon. Kasi if God cursed them, the curse would have remained unbreakable. Because everything God decrees from eternity becomes eternal here on earth. Even nung nagkasala si Adan at Eva, God is not the one who cursed them. It is the land that cursed them. So they were cursed by the same law that guaranteed their blessing if they obey its righteous requirements. Diba sa Deuteronomy 38, kapag ito ginawa mo, you will be blessed. Kapag ito ang ginawa mo, you will be what? Uh, you will be cursed. Oh. So, if they were cursed by not obeying the demands of the law in the area of tithings and offering, in tithes and offering, they could also break the curse of law. By what? By simply coming back into a place of obedience to the law. Nakuha po. If you were cursed by the law because you did not, dis you did not obey the law, to reverse it, you just obey the law. And then the, the law will the result of the law will be what? Blessing. So the reason the curse was prescribed upon the people is, be is because the law 
is the basis for blessing and curses. That's in the Old Testament. The basis for blessing in curses is it depends upon if you will obey or disobey the law. The Mosaic law allows for the release of both good and evil, blessing and curses, life and death, all from the same stream. So this means then that whatever curse, curse fall upon us can be changed by the power of God when we make the right choices and yield to God's word. So yun ang ibig niyang sabihin. Number four, they brought their tithes to the storehouse. So bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. Okay? During the Mosiak generation, the people who were serviced by the Levitical priesthood were instructed to bring their tithes and offering to the storehouses, which was the temple of God, in natural Jerusalem. The bringing of tithes and offering to the storehouse or referring for us today, local churches, is one of the similarities between the Levitical priestly order and the priestly order of Melchizedek. Okay. Under priestly orders, one of the sacred places God identified for bringing the tithe is to the storehouse or the congregations. Because the place we gather, remember, is a stationary altar. And every altar requires a sacrifice. Yung church na pinupuntahan natin every Sunday, that is an altar. And to maintain that altar, it requires a sacrifice. Kaya pinapadala tayo ni Lord ng kanyang ano? Sacrifice. Yung ating tithes and offering. Naalala niyo po, yung si Abraham naggawa ng altar sa Moriah, Mount Moriah. At ang sabi ni Lord, i-offer mo yung anak mo. He will be the sacrifice. And he obeyed him. But suddenly, nung kanyang sasaksaki na yung kanyang anak, may naipit na, ano, na isang hayop. At ang sabi ni Abraham, the Lord provides. He is my Jehovah Jireh. Jireh. Alam niyo ba yung Jehovah Jireh? His name has nothing to do with our personal needs that are being met. Nung sinabi ni Abraham na God is Jehovah Jireh, He is a provider for the things that we need to sacrifice. Yun ang, yun, ang content noon is about God is supplying our needs para makapag-sacrifice tayo kay Lord. That's why I do believe every day you are blessed by God para pagdating ng Sunday, you have something that you can offer before God as a sacrifice. Genesis 14 so, that is the Levitical priesthood. That's how they gave or offer, they gave their tithes. Okay? Yung apat na klase ng pagbibigay nila ng tithes. Okay? Apat na pamamaraan. So, how to tithe naman under the order of Melchizedek? In Genesis 14, before the law was given to Moses, there is already tight. May tights na. Nauna pa ito. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shabe, That is the king's valley. After his return from the defeat of Chedor Laomer and the kings who were with him. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God, most high. So Melchizedek is the priest of God. At dinescribe ito ni Paul sa Hebrews chapter 7 na si Melchizedek ay walang ano? Walang, walang genealogy, walang father, walang father. Just like the Son of God. So, ibig sabihin, he is not Jesus, 
But ang origin niya is in heaven. And this is my suspect. Hula ko lang. Kasi wala akong makita pa sa Bible. Melchizedek is the high priest in the altar of heaven. He is the one maintaining the the ano, the altar in heaven. Then Melchizedek king of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high and he blessed him and said, Abraham, bless uh, bless be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, and bless be God most high who had delivered your enemies into your hand. And the response of Abraham is this, and he gave him a tithe of all. Nakita nyo? Melchizedek is a heavenly man who carried bread and wine which he offered to Abraham. And Abraham was so impressed with this awesome man that he gave him a tithe of all. Remember, si Abraham, he met some kings already. Pero itong king na ito kakaiba. That's why he was so impressed. And the Lord, most likely, the Lord spoke to him to give him his tithe. The man seemed to know everything about Abraham. Diba? Sabi niya na ano? Uh, sabi niya, oh. And blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your own into your hands. First time nilang magmet. Alam niya kung ano nangyari kay Abraham. He was able to def defeat the five kings. He even told Abraham why he had won the fight against such a mighty foreign army with only 318 men who were trained in his own house. So Let's see the tithe of Abraham. And blessed be God, most high, who has defeated your enemies for you. Then Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the goods. His response to Melchizedek was inspired by his personal sense of awe and by the prevailing culture and the protocol of hosting a king. Tandaan po natin, nung nagbigay si Abraham ng tithe, Saan niya ito natutunan? It's, I believe it's part of what? A prevailing culture at the time of hosting a king. The men of the ancient world did not go to a king without presenting a gift or a royal endowment. As far as Abraham was concerned, Melchizedek was the greatest and the most glorious king he had ever met. So, anong ginawa niya? He gave him a tithe. Kasi yung spoil nung war na nakuha niya doon, yung 10% nun, ibinigay niya kay Melchizedek. Out of his deep sense of honor and personal awe, Abraham, the father of the faithful, gave his first tithe into the priestly order of Melchizedek. So Abraham did not tithe into Melchizedek because he thought Melchizedek could use the money. No. Abraham knew that there was nothing that he owned that could pay for the services of such a great king. This is why it's imperative that we discover the spiritual ramifications of, of belonging to the priestly order of Melchizedek. Dapat natin maintindihan. We don't belong to the Levitical priesthood or the priesthood of Aaron. We belong to the priestly order of Melchizedek. Jesus Christ is our high priest. I truly believe that Abraham, Abraham sensed that he was standing in the presence of God when he had face-to-face -face encounter with Melchizedek. Kasi dinescribe niya ano eh ni tawag dito ni Paul si Melchizedek na wala siyang ano genealogy without a father and a mother so in other words he came from the spirit just like the son of God oh. out of a heart filled with worship honor and inspiration he gave his 
tithe. He gave Melchizedek the king priest tithes of honor. Si Melchizedek po ay king at the same time, he is a priest. Doon sa Levitical priesthood, nahati yon sa law. O, yung kingship na punta sa Judah at yung priesthood na punta sa Levites. So, Abraham gave tithes to a king and not just to a priest. So, since every king has a kingdom, it is safe to say, to assume, that Abraham's tithe were used to support what we call a kingdom. Everything that is given to a king become part of his royal state. You know, a king is a king because he owns the land. He owns a land. That's why he is a king. The bigger the land, the bigger the territory na kanyang own at na conquer, the, the same thing nagiging more powerful siya Depende doon sa size ng territory na kanyang control. This means then that Abrahamic tithing model is a kingdom driven and a kingdom minded tithing model. This is why it is the highest form and level of tithing mentioned in the scripture. Tithing in the order of Melchizedek is the highest form of tithing. Under the Levitical priesthood, tithes were given to support the priesthood. Since New Testament living revolves around the advancing the kingdom, the giving of tithes of honor will continue until the kingdom is what? Established. Sabi ni Dr. Miles Monroe, he describes tight as a form of kingdom tax. That kingdom citizen give into the kingdom treasury to show their allegiance with the kingdom. So when we tight, after the order of Melchizedek, we are showing God our loyalty to Him. Alam niyo ang sa Old Testament, why the the Israelites obey the law not to be saved alam nila yun na hindi sila maliligtas by just obeying the law the reason why they are obeying the law to the letter is they want to show God their loyalty their allegiance to Him now in the New Testament when we give our when we pay our tithes when we, oh, when we pay our tithes we give our tithes what happens? We show our allegiance to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Now, there are seven reasons why you need to give to a king. Sa Melchizedek tithing, you're giving it to the king. You're giving it to the high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, royal protocol requires that a gift must be presented when visiting a king. This is a protocol of the kingdom. Remember Queen Sheba? He brought such lavish gift to King Solomon even though he was the richest, he was richer than she was. So kung si Queen, King Solomon naman ang bibisita kay Queen Sheba, yun din ang gagawin ni King Solomon. That's the protocol. It was a royal protocol he would have done the same had he visited her. That's the first uh, reason why we give to a king. Okay? A gift must be presented when visiting a king. That's why I cannot imagine every Sunday you come to an altar and worship the Lord. You visit the king. You enter the presence of God. But you're empty-handed 
wala kang dala-dala. Hmm. Sige nga, isipin natin. Number two, the gift must be fitting for the king. That's why yung tithes, when we gave our tithes, it is, we are giving it to the king. Why it is fitting? Because bunga ng ating mga pawis yan. Pinaghirapan natin yan. Worse than approaching a king with no gift is to bring a gift unworthy of him. Oh. An inappropriate or inadequate gift amount to an insult to an insult to the king. So when we bring an inappropriate gift, it's actually an insult to the king. Oh. It shows that the giver does not properly respect the king or his authority. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. That's why, when you go to the king, you what? You bring the best. Okay? Number three reason. The gift reveals our value or worship of the king. The quality of what we offer to the king and the attitude which which we offer it, it reveals much more than our words do of the value or the worthiness we attach to him. The word worship means also worship. Do ng galik. Because worship demands a gift. And giving is what? Worship. Worship is where we get the word worship. To worship the king means to ascribe worth or worthiness to him. So yan yung purpose ng ating ginagawang pagbibigay ng tithes in this present day. After the order of Melchizedek. Abraham modeled it to us. There is no genuine worship without gift giving. Remember the Magi, the, the kings who visited Jesus? They brought gifts. Nagdala sila ng regalo. They have the revelation that Jesus is the king. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Number five, giving to a king attracts his favor. Kings are attracted to people who give with a willing and a grateful spirit. There was a story of a kingdom at yung mga may isang farmer dun sa kingdom na yon, kasi the kingdom, the land, is owned by the king. So, they pay taxes. Every harvest, nagbibigay sila ng, ano, ng, ng, ng tax dun sa king because the king owns the land. And one day, isang farmer nagtanim ng singkamas at siya ay nakaani ng napakalaking singkamas. At ang sabi ng farmer, dapat kong ibigay ito sa hari. It's a sign of a of the of this my gift to the king he is worthy because he is my king so kaya ginawa niya nilagay niya sa kariton yung malaking sikamas at dinala niya doon sa palasyo tuwan-tuwa yung hari at sabi niya mahal na hari narito po ako po yung inyong hamak na magsasaka sa lugar na ito maraming salamat po at pinagagamit mo sa akin ang yung lupain at dahil po roon, ako'y umani ng, na, ng isang napakalaking singkamas. At ito po'y aking inaalay sa iyo, mahal na hari. Natuwa ang hari. At ang sabi ng hari, doon sa kanyang alalay, kuha ka ng dusat sa aking kahadihero, sa aking treasure chest. Bigyan mo ng uh, kayamanan itong tao na ito. Dahil nagbigay sa akin ng honor. So umuwi siya, may dala-dala siyang treasure box na maraming mga alahas, mamamahaling uh, jewelries. Nung siya'y pag niya, nakita nung kapatid, sabi nung kapatid, anong ginawa mo? Well, I just honor my king, our king. 
yung ina ni kong singkamas na malaki ibinigay ko sa kanya dahil siya lang ang karabad dapat na tunganggap nito. So, wrong motive yung kapatid. Hinanap niya yung lahat, inipon niya yung lahat ng kanyang mga kayamanan, alahas, mamahaling mga precious stones and jewelries. At pumunta siya sa hari at nagbigay din siya ng offering ng gifts sa king. At natuwa ang hari. O hulaan nyo, pag uwi niya, ano ang kanyang daladala? Ang pinakamalaking singkamas. Like anyone else, a king likes to know he is loved and appreciated. That's why every time we give our tithes and offering, natutuwa ang Diyos. Kasi we are expressing our appreciations and love to the king. The king of heaven is the same way. He feels the same way. So, tithing in the New Testament or in the uh, Melchizedek, the order of Melchizedek is what? You're giving it to the king. That's why the king attracts. Giving to a king attracts his favor. The giver is attracted to the giver and ex extend his favor, gives open doors to blessing, opportunities, and blessing. Number six, giving to a king acknowledges his ownership of everything. Remember Psalm 24? The heavens belong to God and the fullness thereof, the word and all that and all that and all the people referring to all of us remember kings are lords they own everything in their domain god is a king jesus is king he owns the heaven and the earth and the fullness thereof so ano man ang pwede mong makuha dito sa lupa magain it still belong to God. So when we give our tithes, we honor Him. We acknowledge that God is the owner of everything. So giving to a king is simply returning to him what is already his. That's why in the kingdom of heaven, we are always a steward and never owners. Never owners. We are always stewards and never owners number seven giving to a king is thanksgiving and one of the best way to express gratitude is with a gift di ba pag nagbati sa inyong happy birthday sinasagot minsan ay say it with a gift di ba because gratitude express is in itself a gift. Before Melchizedek left the sin, he blessed Abraham who was the custodian of the covenant of promise. The fact that this king priest blessed Abraham proves that he was far more far powerful and loftier than Abraham. So, anong binigay naman niya, no? Ni Melchizedek? Bread and wine. Okay? Oh. Anong ibig sabihin ng bread and wine? So every time you pay your you give your tithes to the Lord is what? He will give you bread and wine. Melchizedek also gave Abraham the supernatural bread and wine that he had brought for from for him from his eternal priestly order. Bread and wine are the eternal emblems of the priestly order of Melchizedek. Kaya naalala si Jesus, nung last supper, that is Passover. In Israel, the Passover, there is a prescribed meal. May pagkain talaga. But on the time of Jesus, 
their Passover celebration with his disciple is what? Bread and wine. And then after that, sinugasan ni, ni Jesus yung paan na kanyang mga disciple. You know what God is doing? He is initiating them into a new kind of priesthood. Na sinasabi ni Jesus, the Aaronic or the Levitical priesthood is over and you are now entering into a new kind of priesthood. That's why you have to wash your feet. Alam niyo po, yung washing, the foot washing there, it, that it is not a religious practice of, uh, you know, doon sa kanila kasi, before you enter the house, a servant, hugasan ang paa mo. Kasi nga, walang sapatos doon eh. Pangalawa, yung table nila, wala silang table. Nasa lapag yung ano, kainan nila. So, dapat malinis ang paa mo. Jesus Christ washed the feet of His disciple after the meal. So, it's not the normal foot washing. Madalas sinasabi natin is uh, yung foot washing is about humility and serving other. But the real context of that verse of foot washing is about initiating us into the Melchizedek priesthood. Kaya nung uh, sabi ni Peter, Lord, wag mo hugasan ng paako kasi para bang sinasabi niya na nakakahiya naman sa'yo, parang ganon. Anong sabi ni Lord? Pag hindi ko hinugasan ng paa mo, you have no part with me. Eh, sabi ni Peter, Oh Lord, pati ulo ko at katawang ko na hugasan mo. Sometimes natatawa tayo sa response ni Peter, but the truth is, Peter understood what Jesus is doing. Because a priest, before he enters the Holy of Holies, he has to be cleansed by water. At the time, sinasabi ni Jesus, you are now entering into a new kind of priesthood. That's why all born-again believers are what? Belongs to the priesthood, to the order, to the order of Melchizedek priesthood. Jesus is our high priest. So what will be the response of Jesus when you gave your tithes? He will give you the bread and wine. He will give you the bread and wine. This is the eternal emblems of the priestly order of Melchizedek. Conclusion The high priest after the order of Melchizedek is both God and King. That is Jesus. And our New Testament high priest can never ever be on the payroll of his own kingdom citizen. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Doon kasi sa uh, Old Testament, when they give their tithes, that is bayad doon sa kanilang priestly services. At pag yung priest ay hindi nagpangsyon sa kanilang priestly services, they are forfeited. The rights are forfeited na bigyan nung ano, nung nung uh, tithes na yon. Hindi sila bibigyan. So, in the New Testament, we are not paying God because God owns everything. So, if you are paying God, it seems like the high priest Jesus Christ is in our payroll. Nakuha niyo po? Hindi ganon. Sa Old Testament, yung mga priest ay nasa payroll ng mga Israelites. But in the New Testament, magkaiba. Even the mention of paying our tithes, tithes is an insult under this eternal priestly order. We don't pay the tithes in the New Testament. We give it because, it because it belongs to Him. Pastors do not have to give us priestly services in order for them to receive the resources belongs to Him. That's why ako naniniwala simula nung, nung ako ay nagpastor. The Lord told me na it is not the congregation that will support you. 
it is me that will bless you. Because ko ang paniniwala lang natin, yung kongregasyon ang, magpapa, ang bubuhay sa iyo, siya ang magsusupport sa iyo financially, gamay lang o maliit lang talaga mapupunta sa iyo. O especially kung imagine mo kung ikaw ay pioneering. O baka wala pa isang daan ang tithes and offering sa loob ng isang linggo. Paano ka mabubuhay doon? Nakuha niyo po. But out of our own free will, we can choose to give Him the gift of tithe or the endowment of tithe, which already belongs to Him because He earns our tithes. He owns it. Our tithe already belongs to our faithful high priest who is both God and King of the universe. As God and King, Christ doesn't need to perform for us in order to earn our tithes. So Old Testament kasi, they need to perform the priestly function. Samahan nila mag-offer ng sacrifice, lahat yun. Oh. Kaya nga, nakakatawa ko minsan yung mga karanasan ng mga pastor eh. Pag na-offend sa kanila yung ano, yung mga member nila, especially yung mayayaman, hindi nagbibigay ng tithes. Oh, we withhold nila yun. Hmm. So si Jesus doesn't need to perform for us in order to earn our tithe. Because everything we have and use to acquire resources belongs to Him. When we give it freely, we honor Him as King and Priest. Under the priestly order of Melchizedek, the priestly services the high priest provide for his kingdom citizens through his earthly under shepherds or the pastor are secondary to the fact that he is worthy of all our praise and adorations. Kaya ang tawag sa ating mga pastor ay ano? Under shepherds. He is what? The real shepherd. He is the shepherd. He is the head of the ecclesia. Oh, we are just what? co regent co-ruler with him. This also means that under the priestly order of Melchizedek, we cannot withhold the tithe from the local church where God has put us. Kung sa kanila, guy, doon mo dalhin yun. So the priestly order of Melchizedek operates out of the tree of life which has no curse in it. Walang curse nakasama. So, paano pastor kung hindi nagbigay? This doesn't mean that there are no spiritual consequences for not tithing under the priestly order of Melchizedek. In the Old Testament, there is a curse because that is written on the law. And the law says, if you obey the law, there will be blessing. If you disobey, they will be cursed. In the New Testament, it's light. That's why, di ba? Pag inaral nyo ang Bible, there is what we call temple theology. In the Old Testament, there is temple or altar. There is a priest that ministers to the altar. There are sacrifices that is offered to the altar. In the New Testament, the temple theology is the same. Nag-iba lang yung sacrifice. Tayo, ang altar. Wala ng physical altar made by hands. Our hearts, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? 1 Corinthians 3.16 Second, sacrifice. Romans 12, verse 1. Offer yourself as a living light. Living sacrifice. And thirdly, you are the priest. Oh, First Peter chapter two, eight and nine, for you are a royal priesthood. So in the New Testament, tayo na ang temple, tayo na ang priest, tayo pa ang sacrifice. So under the priestly order of Melchizedek, 
non-titers are chastised with a diminishing capacity for manifesting the favor of God. That's what happens. In the New Testament, if you don't give your tithes, there will be what? Your capacity for manifesting the favor of God is what? Diminishing from you. Na kahit anong gawin nyo, sabi mo, bakit hindi ako biniblessed ni Lord? Not because there is a curse. It means it's quite difficult to get the spiritual breakthroughs we need in reasonable time frames. Di mo makuha. Yung mga breakthroughs na kailangan mo. So if you continue to dishonor God by not giving Him His proper gift or endowment of tithe, God will eventually stop giving us the bread and wine of the priestly order of Melchizedek. That's why when you give your tithes, you honor the king. And when you honor the king, the king will give you what? Bread and wine. This means that the flow of God's divine revelation and the anointing of His precious Holy Spirit may also begin to diminish pag di ka nagbigay ng tithes. Yan ang mayayari sa iyo. So the Holy Spirit is given to those who obey our faithful high priest who is also King of Kings. Acts 5.32 And we are His witnesses to these things and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. See? The anointing of the Holy Spirit will flow because you honor the King of Kings. But if, if you dishonor Him, mahirapan ka. Sabi sa Bisaya ay maning kamot at maning tiil. Gagawin mo yon in your own human strength and determinations. The eternal structures of the kingdom of heaven is the same eternal structure where the throne of God and the Lamb of God reside. Kaya nung tayo na born again, we enter the kingdom. We are inside the kingdom of God. That's why the ble in the Old Testament, ang blessing, you are the outside. Kaya sabi ni Lord, I will open the windows at doon ibubuhos yung blessing. Kaso lang, yung blessing na ibubuhos sa'yo, wala ka namang room na paglagyan. Because the fullness of the blessing, you can receive only the fullness of blessing, it's only through the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya nga, naglagay si Lord ng last will and testament. So according to the Apostle Paul John, no curse can exist in a spiritual structure which has bought the throne of God and the Lamb. No more curse. So this is why New Testament spiritual leaders must not threaten New Testament believers who live under the priestly order of Melchizedek with a curse if they do not tithe. So, the problem is sometimes we pastors are, you know, we threaten the congregations, the people, for not tithing, sabi niya, curse will come. No. It's not the curse. If you are giving it in a Levitical priesthood, yes, there will be curse. But, if you're giving it after the order of Melchizedek, walang curse. <clears throat> but it doesn't mean there is no consequences. There is always a consequence. These spiritual leaders either believe that the New Testament church is under grace or under the law of Moses. But they cannot believe that the church is under both. It's not, hindi pwedeng both. It's either you believe that the church or the ecclesia is under grace or under the law. The apostle is very clear in this apostolic teaching that the grace cancels the law and the law cancels grace. So there are some very, very powerful spiritual benefits which will begin to flow our way when we ship from Malachi chapter 8 
to 12 tithing model to Genesis 14, 17 to 20 tithing model. So in other words, ang tithe andyan pa rin nasa New Testament. Ang binago lang ni Lord sa tithing is the way we give it. Because in the Old Testament, it belongs to what? The Levitical priesthood. Remember, the tithe has something to do with the priesthood. And the priesthood that we receive is not the Levitical priesthood, but the Melchizedek priesthood. Jesus is our high priest. So every time you give your tithe, you're not giving it to your pastor. You're not giving it lit you're, you're not giving it to the church itself. Primarily, you're giving it to the king, to our Lord Jesus Christ. The curse of not tithing that is prescribed in Malachi chapter 3 can never be applied to post-Calvary New Testament believers whether they tithe or not. Okay? There is a more excellent way of exacting the tithe from the New Testament believers. When we give a tithe based on the priestly, priestly order of Melchizedek, our tithe has the power to infinitely increase our spiritual capacity to receive the fullness of the blessing of Abraham. God will release his bread and his wine. So mga kapatid, that's what tithing is all about. The tithing in the Old Testament is still part of the New Testament. But the only difference is we are giving it not the Malachi way, Malachi chapter 3, but we are giving it the way Abraham gave his tithe to Melchizedek. Why? Jesus Christ was appointed to be the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Okay? So, this morning, let us pray. Let's come to the Lord. And as we give our tithes and offering, let us remember na it is, we are giving up. We gave our tithe based on the priestly order of Melchizedek. That's why giving of our tithes is what? It's, a, it's an act of worship. It's an act of honoring the king. Amen. You honor the king. And when you honor the king, it attracts favor from the king. Amen. Today, let's honor the Lord. Father, we thank you.